Hey, this is Chad the Mark, and thanks for checking out the We Don't Know Sports podcast. This episode, we are dialing in on the GOAT of coaches, Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, anyone else that might be in the conversation. We're going to try to touch base on all those things. This is the We Don't Know Sports podcast. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome back to the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. This is Chad and the Mark with Mr. Brown and Canadian Biggie. And also Mango. Welcome back, everybody. We got a full house. We're feeling good. Biggie, uh, a little late arrival. You doing okay, bud? I'm worried about you. You know, I'm slowly dying, but I'm living more than I'm dying, so I'll take it. <laughs> so today he felt like he was going back to Midwest time. That sounded like a Tim McGraw song he was yeah. just talking about. Exactly. Is that what that was? Were you trying to sneak that in there? No, that's trying live to like live you're like you're dying. dying. Biggie's. I don't think Tim McGraw meant sleep to you die. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, he was shitting till yeah. he dies. Oh, okay. That's how that works. Yeah. But I'm glad you made it because we have a lot to talk about. Because, uh, you know, it's topical for the moment, but I think longevity wise, you could have this conversation anytime. I think we're going to have a conversation about greatest coach in football history because we just had the story of. Nick Saban retire, retiring, right? Like, he's not going anywhere else, as far as we know. He's got, like, eight uh, Mercedes-Benz dealerships down south. Shit. He's got Ferrari. And Alabama Ferrari. Ferrari. dealership. Is, uh, it's crazy. So, the reports are now he's focusing on his businesses and his family. So, he, he's, he's done. And then, Biggie, it's been a end of an era when it comes to the New England Patriots. Uh, you know, we talked about this a little bit in the past, but, but hold, before back-to-back -back days – Two arguable goats for each division, oh, college wild. and pro level, announced their potential retirements in back-to-back -back days. I mean, I think Saban's done. He's going to talk about Belichick. I think he's got still got an itch. I looked up their age. Uh, Belichick is 71. Saban's 72. Ah, would you think? Did you know that? I he, did. So they're really good buddies. It's funny, though, because of like I feel like they're still at a different place in life, and I feel like they're going to go two different routes. What do you think? Saban's definitely retired. College football has changed so much. I don't think he wants to deal with it anymore. And he reached such a, a pinnacle to the top there. You go out almost, well, on top. And he's got all the money he's ever going to need. I mean, he proved he still has it. You know what I mean? Yep. It, it's But is he just done with all the NCAA nonsense now because of NI? Like, what was it last year and the year before we had this mass exodus when it came to college basketball coaches? Coach K, Roy Williams, um, what's the dude, Jay Wright, I, I, who else? Jim Bob Bayham's Huggins. Gone. Yep. Bob Huggins is gone for other reasons. It's been funny <laughs> to see how these legends in both college basketball and college football have adapted to the new collegiate landscape. So the fact is, all those college basketball coaches like, I'm getting the hell out. Nick Saban's still winning, right? But guess what? That was still the decline of Alabama football once you had the transfer portal in the NIL because he realized now everybody on the same playing field as me, maybe even better. Nick Saban got caught on tape. It was, what, two off seasons ago talking about at a booster meeting how they needed to spend more money and ended up going viral. And he talked about Texas a and m buying their team. And essentially what he was saying was, I can still get the best players in here, but if you don't pay them as much as the next school, they ain't coming. How Ain't it funny, though, that he's crying about Texas A&M now? I think that's when he realized I'm retiring here in the next year or two. So Hopefully on my way out with a for championship, me, but, you know, he didn't have that. The way he went out was great because you got Georgia, who's two-time defending national champ, won 30 straight games. Kirby Smart's one of his protégés. Part of history. You get to the SEC championship game. You can go look at Nick Saban's pregame speech to that team. We're all in our 40s. We'd have ran through a brick wall for him. Goes out, beats Georgia. If he had a center, it could snap the ball. Might have won a nation, another national title. It's nice because three straight years without winning a title, oh, Nick Saban's done. Now nah, they're back with CFP. What's crazy to me, to me, is the fact that we, I think we could argue right now it's Michigan, and you would also say that Georgia is probably the two best programs in the country, but the fact is that Nick Saban still gave Georgia that big fuck you on his way out. I, I, that's true. It's perfect. <laughs> Maybe he thought that this is the last, this last time I'm beating him. I'm stepping out now. Yeah, that, Let's go to Georgia game, was, boys. I don't was, give a shit about the rest. That's basically <laughs> him going out with the W, right? Like national championship playoffs didn't matter. I beat Kirby. Put him back where he needs to be. So 
when you when you think of Nick Saban, this is the longest he's ever went with went without winning a national title at Alabama since he won his first one three straight years. No player that ever played for Nick Saban in Alabama that played for him for four years left without a national title ring. Do you know how many first round picks Nick Saban sent to the NFL? I, I would say it's at least over twenty. Higher. Way more than that. Over forty? Forty nine. Wow. How was gonna say forty two? Wow. Now, here's the kicker. How many games did Nick Saban lose at Alabama? Uh, less than that. 29. Yeah, 29. I know yeah. he had never had a losing season in any season was in he his like career. Was he like 92 yeah, and 49 or something like 20, that? 20, however 26? many seasons as a college head coach, never, never had a losing, losing season. season. In so, any program. So what I would like to do is is talk about like his he legacy. He had enough losing with the Browns. He Well, I mean, he wasn't the head coach. He couldn't That's help correct. And the Browns were dying. They were dead. I want to talk about the Dolphins, too, and how that impacts his legacy. But something I want you guys to keep – in the back of your minds for a second, I want to come back to it. You think about the state of college football right now. I want you to think about what the best job is in college football. Not not the best situation right now, but just – and don't confuse it or conflate it with the coach. Maybe the coach makes it look good. But if you had to say this job is the best job in the country, I'm going to come back to that. I don't want you to answer yet. I want to come back to that because I want to give you time to process that. Because a lot of people will say Alabama. But the no. question is, no. is Alabama or is Nick Saban the one that made it? Dude, I was getting ready to go on, on record to say that Alabama is the worst job that anyone in the country rates now wants right now because the Oregon coach just came in today for an interview. He flew back and said, I'm staying the Oregon coach. <laughs> That's how bad the Alabama job is right now. Who wants to follow a Hall of Fame legend, the GOAT of all time? It's always going to be a short-term, lame duck coach, and then the next guy hopefully can make his impact. You look at it this year, they lose to Texas at home 34-24, and they push them around a little bit. They're able to run the ball in the fourth quarter. And it's all two years since they won a national title. Nick Saban ain't got it anymore. A bad year at Alabama. Nick Saban's so damn good that 11-2 and two season is a dog shit year. You don't want that job. Yeah, it, it, You know another job you don't want? You don't want the Georgia job. You know another job you don't want? You don't want the Michigan or the Ohio State job. Expectations, those are all the good jobs. Those expectations are so high. You know the job you want? You want to be at Kentucky. They're a basketball school. Stoops wins eight games, gets $8 million a year. And they keep There's not a lot of there. pressure. No, but you, but you, 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 <laughs> New moon of yeah. Kentucky, keep on shining. <laughs> You've got to look, though, where Alabama was when Nick Saban took over. They weren't they the were, same Alabama. No. And that's what he's talking about. But you got to find that program that you can come in and, and elevate back to where they it needs to be. They forget that. People forget that Alabama was a shit show. Who was the guy that was there? He had like an Irish name or something. Who the hell was there before him? Patches O'Houlihan. Yeah, Patches O'Houlihan. Yeah. Well, no wonder, Mike Shula he was, was about as there. useful as a poopy flavored lollipop. People forget <laughs> Alabama when Bear Bryant retired in like 81 or 82. It wasn't and he Bear died. Bryant. <laughs> he died two weeks no, later. The next 25 years, their only good season was the 92 National Championship. They had become irrelevant. You're 100% correct because you have Bear Bryant who could arguably be the GOAT. Nick Saban, who could arguably be the GOAT. And then you have that dead period in between. And everyone wants to forget about that whole dead period and pretend like they just ran into each other. You know, speaking in the of, 90s, it was like Florida State, Miami, Nebraska. Nebraska, yeah. Miami and well, Nebraska are so far gone. Well, well Nebraska is They were powerhouses. What happened? Hey, Nebraska's well, on the way Barry back. Switzer and they, uh, what's his name? The senator, uh, Tom what? Tom Osborne. Tom Osborne. He gone? He gone? Is he dead now? He's still alive. All right. Well, bless uh, his heart. We need he, him back. Yeah, yep. I feel like I would have known that one. He only partially died after he ran Wasn't for governor. Wasn't he like a senator or something? He ran for yeah. governor and senator, right? Or just no, he governor. was a senator. He was a senator. Or ran for he... governor and lost? Yeah. yeah there you go. Or Imagine vice versa. That. That's how bad Nebraska has fallen. Tom Osborne runs for governor, and they're like, no, nah, fuck you, Tom. You ruined our program. You left. You should have kept we... coaching. Look you what bitch. happened to us. Now all we have is corn. Exactly. exactly. Keep it in the college team, and you're talking the all-time greatest coaches, Nick Saban, seven national titles, not the most wins ever, but if you look at his records, impeccable. We'd have 292 to say, wins, I believe. So I, I have the, the he's won, He won wins. over 80% of his games as okay. a head coach. All right, all right. so because I, I want to talk about his legacy. So to put some context here is Joe Paterno. They, I, I think this is – 409 victories? Is that – yes, that is – see, Biggie's so damn smart. No, but is he – so two he's national titles, but did two they, or three national titles? Did they titles? give him back those? Uh, We're wins? counting what happened on the field. Okay, right. so yeah. I think that's what this is. Four hundred nine. You know who number two is? 
Uh, Bobby Bowden. Georgia Southern. It is Bobby Bowden. Nice. Georgia hey. Southern. <laughs> what? Eddie Robinson. That's what I was going to say. No, 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 no. This is dude. This he won is, like a no. Billion it is a We're not counting. You know, that's Grambling, okay, right? the Arkansas yeah, School, Grambling. the deaf and the blind. Yeah. Like it's so number two is Bobby Bowden. And by the way, best job I ever had. I was their yearbook photographer. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you just make click noises? And I said, look at the camera. <laughs> you went like this. <laughs> went, <you> went. <laughs> there was no picture. Jesus. <laughs> How, so on well, a legitimate question here, do they make pictures in like Braille for people to see? Like, I don't know how that works. Of course they do. There's Braille everywhere. I saw a video on uh, Instagram the other day that was the first Playboy in Braille, and it was the size of a phone book. Oh yeah. <laughs> so is it pictures or just the articles? No, it's the hand motion. <laughs> it's is, that be why bigger. is that why they just do it in circles? Yeah. They, just... they was waxing off. <laughs> Wax on? Wax off is... is that a new slang? Yeah. If you can't see you wax off the brow. We waxed off. I'm completely serious. I, when I waited tables at Cracker Barrel, I spilled a pitcher of tea on a blind guy and it, he was so surprised. He I mean, what was, I, he was, what was his reaction? Though? He never saw it coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about, boom. Oh. I walked right into that. All right. I, I, <laughs> I'm going to get his back on track after that one. <laughs> We're trying to have a serious conversation, damn it, about the legacy of Nick Saban. Correct. So, number three on the list, Bear Bryant. Pop yep. Warner, Amos Alonzo Stagg. Where was he at? Was he... Stag. Amos Alonzo Stag. Oh, Stag. big. You got to bail us out of here, Whitey Tittle. Why I wanted to say he was in Southeastern school. Uh, I'm going to say it was uh, it was uh, Louisiana Famous Tech. Amos. They made cookies after him. Is that who that is? Is that really Famous Amos? That's Famous Amos in my book. Oh, you don't know. Uh, no, I'm drawing a giant blank. Mm. Uh, he was, uh, well, he went to school at Yale. Why is it so hard to look up old people online? It only is for, like, college football, apparently. Just type his name in. I am. I'm pulling up his Wikipedia because God knows that's the most trusted All right, source so on the internet. While you're looking, what else are we talking about? Uh, do we bring up Joe Pa yet? Well, I mean, we were talking about Joe Pa there, but he's marred so much with the the Jerry Sandusky stuff. I but mean, anyway, after Amos Alonzo Stagg, who I'm looking up, Nick Saban was next on the list. So there there you go. Matt Where Brown's did Amos Alonzo How many Stagg wins coach? did Nick Saban have? 292. You got it. Word state coach. Uh, he coached at. I don't even know what Chicago is. This right? Yeah, that's Yale. Like, he played at Yale. Chicago was okay. a football so school. So if I flip I this question Leola. just a little bit, we don't go so much with the all-time wins. How about we go with guys who were great at university? You got Boshin Beckler at Michigan, Woody Hayes at uh, Ohio State, John McKay USC back in the day. Mac Brown, to me, is a guy who should be in this conversation. National title at Texas, was great at North Carolina, went to Texas. Now he's back in North Carolina, their top 25 team. I don't know that year. recent Duke Mayo's Bowl loss is really hurting his legacy to His me. whole damn team well, left. <laughs> and I'm a winner when you opted out. I appreciate the W, but his whole damn team opted out. All right, Do so you know I- Brian Kelly's the active leader in career wins with Nick Savingham retired? No, He's got like, I, I thought Mac Brown was. No, Mac, no. On uh, mm. on the radio, they said it was Brian Kelly. I'm going to fight you on that one. I bet you they're. they're I feel like Mac Brown's like 200 years older than Mac. Mac Brown's got 276. Okay. And I think that. Brian Kelly? Brian Kelly's got 281. Oh. I'm so right. What is your opinion of Mr. Kelly? Apparently you like him. I think he's a northern coach and only a northern coach. I think that when Jim Harbaugh officially leaves for the Raiders, they go after Brian Kelly, and he happily leaves go LSU. To to he doesn't Michigan. get up to Michigan and say, I want a mock I'm at. That I stupid beg fucking forgiveness. southern twang thing. Biggie is correct. 281. I'm looking at a dated article, and it is 283. Oh, He's closer than you, sir. Let's give him two claps and a Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! My hands are on the mic. Sorry. I know you had the juicy IPA, and I was worried. I didn't want to cause any issues. I was hoping our uh, audience would do it. <laughs> juicy, juicy audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I told Biggie we were uh, rendezvousing at the gym the other day, yeah. having a conversation on the treadmill, and uh, I said I think Nick Saban might be the greatest coach of all time. Period. That's it. 
not college football, not just – I'm saying overall. I oh, no, no, I disagree with that. Make, make the argument. I mean, definitely he's college football. All right, so can we all agree on that? Is that a good starting point? Is there a better college football coach that's ever been at the helm than Nick Saban? Does anybody have a better resume? I'd say no. He's got more national titles than anybody. More national tit- uh-huh. titles, uh, one of the highest win percentages, and he also did it at a time with more player movement. So right. it was a lot easier to win 10 or 11 games a year in the 70s and 80s when Tom Osborne was doing it yep. than it is now. He uses Horde scholarships. National oh, yeah. titles national titles at multiple schools. Right. So can we at least give a shout-out where Mr. Saban, the GOAT, is from, Chad? He is from... West by God, Virginia. Was what he born in, he up in? Was he born in Fairmont? Fairmont. Fairmont. Fairmont, West Virginia. There you go. Yeah. I, right there, he should be coming back to Morgantown. Yeah, he, so we could trust the You crime. know how many ignorant West Virginia fans really think that uh, if we would have fired Neil Brown, look, that Nick how, Saban would have waltzed into Morgantown just, and plucked us from that, obscurity? That would be him like doing like a charity event. Like even if it was like a year, it would be I'm, like, you know. I'm, I'm aroused I'm, just thinking about it. Yeah, it would be like Nick him, Saban. Like, Donating to charity for his tax purposes. <laughs> there, there ain't no way WVU is paying him $12 million a year. <laughs> Nick Saban leaves Alabama to coach West Virginia. That's like a retired guy who just doesn't have enough of the game. He goes back to his high school to donate. Never that's, happened. That's exactly. how low West Virginia is. He could run for governor up. tomorrow. Yeah, hey, that maybe that is really why he retired. Correct. I do not think Miami, the Dolphins, tarnish his legacy. I feel like... Uh, he got there. Maybe it was a little more challenging than he wanted to deal with. If you look at him and Bilicek, Bilicek is younger, but he looks older. <laughs> <laughs> he saw yeah. the writing on the wall. But Dude, I have a lot Nick to say Saban about the Saban was Miami nine thing. and seven in his first year in Miami. He was nine and seven his first year in Miami, and then the second year kind of fell apart a little bit towards the end of it. Nick Saban made a grown man, professional football player, six five, three hundred some pounds, cry. Who, who's that? Offensive lineman in training camp. Mm. I'd have to look his name up. Oh, so, uh, incognito? Was it? No, no, it wasn't Richie him. Incognito. Nobody made that guy cry. <laughs> no. uh, th- I, I will say this. I, I was listening to Jason Taylor talk about Nick Saban, and, and man, you talk about high regard. And, and he was talking about how when Saban got there, it's like, we're not running the 4 3 anymore, we're running the 3 4. And he's just like, Man, I've run the four three my whole career. I ain't doing this shit. And then, like, he was on vacation, and Saban calls him, and he's just like, I want to talk to you. And he's telling him, he's like, you know who else played in 3-4? Lawrence Taylor, Kevin Green, Greg Lloyd. He just started rattling off these names that, that didn't line up in the three-point stance. And Jason Taylor was like, damn, I was ready to end my vacation and go back and start practice. Like, it was March. Exactly. But that, that's what Nick Saban can do. And, you know, we saw him do it in college. And maybe it's harder to do in the NFL. But what the reason why he left – was you're right. It got too hard because they went all in to get a player that they didn't get, and then it all fell apart. Do you remember who they wanted? Well, the way I remember it was they wanted Drew Brees, but the management didn't take him because he had the bad shoulder. They said, we'll go with Dante Culpepper, who's got the bad knee. Well, Dante Culpepper had them fucking Kenny Pickett hands before <laughs> it was a thing. He couldn't hold on to the damn ball. He didn't have Randy Moss running He had the Tiny Man's line. hands. Yeah, that was, that, that, that's that's what did? really sunk him. If he's they would have just went too. with Brees, I, mean, I don't think that Saban well. ever goes back. Sorry, I don't mean to keep talking, but like he threw the ball pretty well for tiny hands overall. Of course, you have Randy Moss. Yeah, yes, that helps. <laughs> Randy mind. Moss made his career. Back. Anybody <laughs> looked good with him. <laughs> if you look oh. at his career outside of Randy Moss, it's not that great. There I, you go. I, I will say that when – all that transpired. If you're Nick Saban and you talk about him being the control freak he is, could you imagine like the GM says, like, I don't know, man. I just don't think he's got the shoulder health that we're looking for. Nick Saban's like, are you kidding me? You know, he's not in control of this decision. Right then and there, if you look at his whole career, is it any wonder he went back to college? I mean, I mean that's what he wants. There's a good story about him taking the Alabama job. And uh, he was really interested in it, but he decided after that second season in Miami, can't leave yet. I started to build something here. It's kind of taken a step backwards. His wife, Terry, they went to meet at uh, the airport or something like let's, that. Let's make a point real quick. Terry runs shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I swear, that's true. I don't even know what you're talking about. You got to elaborate. His well, wife. Oh. He was going to tell Alabama no. Well, his wife had uh, already told him to go ahead and fly into Miami. So when he got done with Miami stuff and he was like you know all right we'll go talk to him I'll let him know I'm gonna pass on the job uh they don't even need to come in she's like 
they're already here. I told them you talk to them in person. Oh hell! When when they made the decision, Wayne Heisinga, who was the GM, I remember Wayne. He's sitting in the um, living room with the Sabins. Like it was all like they they talked about it a long time, and it was a tough decision. But that's, it's extremely hard. I mean, <laughs> you want to give up an NFL job? <laughs> I mean, think about that. <laughs> to go to Alabama, who was down? It yeah. was uh, one of the Shulas was there before Saban. Mike Ooh. Shula. Mike Shula. Yeah. David Shula. He was a terrible coach for the Bengals, and I hope he never coached again. So can I say one thing about the Dolphins? You can say two things if you want. So the point is, for me, as as much as people, Alabama fans, want to forget the time between Bear Bryant and Nick Saban, which is complete bullshit, I think it's perfectly acceptable for people to forget this little down period of time in Nick Saban's career with the Dolphins because of how much more he did at the other level. So let's forget about that. Well, how many two-year coaches would love to have I mean, his record? I know that's my point though, because the NFL is a whole different level. Like, I mean, you got to have support from so many different angles. And the fact is, a head coach can't do it all by himself. Can you name many players off that Dolphins team offensively? I cannot. <laughs> to, to interrupt, to I'm watch assuming you. Mr. Uh, Taylor and uh, someone else. Zach Thomas. Yeah, and, yeah. Was Chris Chambers on those squads, maybe? I can't I can Possibly. talk about the defense, but not the offense. <laughs> To I'm what? sure it was like Ryan Tannehill, <laughs> or uh, or what's his name, oh, Fitz wait. Magic. Did they do? Was that? <laughs> did they have for thirty Pennington. years? Was Chad Pennington playing for? It was probably Jay or uh, Jay Feely or yeah. Fiedler. Fiedler. Yeah, Fiedler. What were you gonna say? How Let's many say other it. random ass quarterbacks for the Dodgers? To what you just said about the difference between college and NFL coaching, you just said how many different things you have to have right from how many different angles to get these Stuff professionals out of your control. At, at the college level, whereas you get to have so much more control. At the college level, you're the CEO of the yep. program. At the at the pro level, you have to have everyone pulling on the same chain together, working as a well-oiled machine. And if you don't, if everyone's not seeing eye to eye, that program at the at the pro level is going to fail. Let's be honest, too. When you're in Miami, like how much shit is there to do in Miami? Which, when How do you stay focused on football what, when you got all them what, Cuban booties in your ass? It's not even that. They don't care, but the Cuban booties are nice. But let's be honest, Tuscaloosa cheerleaders, they are A-plus in my book. But I will say, if you're Nick Saban in Tuscaloosa, you're a football god. Absolutely. Like, it is a well, different level there. I was also going to use that to reference Bill Belichick retiring. For what he did at that level, that's why I don't think that Nick Saban's the goat of all coaches. He's the greatest college coach ever. But on the pro level. So who would you put? All time greatest coach. Because I put it out there. No, all time greatest coach of all sports. Or do you or before he answers, do we want to talk about Belichick a little bit? Because he's done. Or do you want to answer that? Well, I actually think Belichick, we'll find out in the next couple of weeks. I think he might continue to coach because he's the rumor is, is that he's he's still really into it and he wants to pass Don Shula's all time wins record, which he's twenty what is he, twenty eight wins? I'll away. look it up and find out. Keep talking. So if you were to continue coaching, the uh, Miami owner or the Miami, the Washington owner is like infatuated with him. You'd have a chance there. And then Arthur Blank after Bill Belichick, the rumor, you know, kind of came out Monday, Tuesday that they were going to be done in New England, has told his GM that you're not doing the head coaching search this time. I'm doing it. And then uh, Ryan Brackle Bonehammer sent me an article today where Arthur Blank's actually been targeting Bill Belichick for two weeks. I heard Atlanta had stepped up their game. If but if you're Belichick, what what's your best option? Where would you want the to? The thing about Atlanta is, if you go there, you're looking at a division that's very winnable. Exactly, yep, it is. And Washington is a great and franchise Desmond with better ownership now. Ugh. But do you want to go into the division where I don't think you got so. Philly and Dallas? No, no. If you're Belichick, you want to win games. I'm, give me that easy division. I'm trying to give you as much rose collar glasses as I can, but you're right. No, a- I mean, Atlanta. if he wants to pad the stats, let's go down there. Because how yeah. many years does he have left? I'd say if he coaches four years, I'd be amazed. I'd say two or three. Yeah. So, I mean, he's got to go somewhere he can win now, but can you do that with Atlanta? They yeah. got talent. I mean, in that division, I think anybody can win a division any given year at this point. It's out. The way it is right now. I feel like the Chargers are a good coach away from I like the Chargers. No, I have heard that now uh, John Gruden's going to join the Saints staff. John Gruden? Yes, to be a member of the offensive coordinator for uh, Derek Carr. Ooh. Ooh. Not the head coach. That uh, Do you think they have some chemistry there? They do. It's a magic. He loves some Carr. He loves some Carr. Do you think yeah. they'll give him a company – uh, iPad 
and monitor his emails. I mean, and web we'll definitely give history. him a Hooters gift card. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know about the rest. Uh, of Hooters that kicked his ass to the curb. They said, "Give me some of that Tony Romo." Yeah, whoever's on it. I mean, I think that'd be a great hire. Be though. Would you? Yeah. Well, here's the thing: if John Gruden didn't have those, what had happened there, uh, the, would the Chargers not want him as their first head coach to come work with uh, Justin Herbert? I right? mean, that's the key position. Like his right? ability to coach and run offense isn't question. It's you know they didn't they win even at the highest level. Quarterback. Yeah. Why we just talked about Nick Saban on the Dolphins? Why did he leave? Right? They didn't have the quarterback position solved, and it made it real easy to walk away. All these other teams we're talking about, except for the Chargers. And, and look, I don't. I'm not saying Herbert's going to be like elite, but he ain't no Trevor Lawrence either. You know what I mean? No. He's a, he's a good quarterback. He's not a Desmond I, I'm, Ritter. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now though, we keep like the fact that Sunshine and Jacksonville just shit the bed and didn't make it. I don't. I don't. That don't surprise me. I feel like he's soft. He's never going to be what we thought he was. Did, did but, he ever really impress you in college, too? Not a lot. I, I mean, think so. I mean, but for a minute. But I mean, I felt like he could have done some things, but, like, he's really uh, underwhelmed. He's one of them but, guys that has great players around him. Same with Mr. Herbert, dude. At some point, you got to win games or just, you know what I mean? Shit or get off the pot, bro. Yeah. I, at least he puts up numbers, though. Okay, because it's garbage time. <laughs> well, Maybe. I think that, throw, that's uh, not his fault. You throw 50 times a game, everybody's going to put up numbers. That's not his fault, though. See, Even Jameis Winston, it's touchdown interception, baby. For Herbert, it's kind of hard to win games when your coach calls it 30, like he's 30. playing fucking Madden. Fourth and seven at our own 37, first drive of the game. Let's go for it. For Brandon Staley's a fucking idiot. That was a Sean McVay tree hire that didn't work so, out. So, yeah. if you feel like if the Chargers got some competent leadership as a head coach, coordinators, how much is it going to change Mr. Herbert? I think if you had someone like Harbaugh go in there as the head coach, I think they win 12, 13 games next you year. you serious? Dude, there's a lot of talent there. So you think they would just overtake the Chiefs? I mean, the Chiefs yeah. do look pretty crappy. Now. I get that, but my point is, you're going to say Jim Harbaugh is worth, what, six wins? Oh, yeah. I don't believe that shit. Dude, he's amazing. Oh, dude, NFL, he went to brother. San Francisco. Dude, so was Sam Nick Saban. See what it got him? He took Sam Colin Kaepernick to the Super Bowl. San Francisco, he went there. They had not been good for a while. Three straight Kaepernick trips to the NFC title game. One Super Bowl. Record His that? bad no. season in San Francisco <laughs> was 8-8. Eight and eight. Bro, you can't just say after the whole segment we had that freaking Harbaugh is worth like eight wins because the fact is Saban wasn't even worth it. Why is I'm not going to base it off of this year where half their team was injured. The year before this, they were in the playoffs. They won 10 games. I don't think For them to win 12 or 13, wins, I'm gonna go that's on a two or three game improvement. I, it, it, There's no coach in any world, in any universe, that's worth more than three or four wins. And that's what right. so that's I just the, said. That's their peak war. Right. There's no way you're saying that much improvement. With the I Chargers. told you he's a two or three win coach. What I tell you guys based on off of not this last year where they fired their head coach and I don't know what they finished with their final record was this the year. year before the year when before they when they were Herbert. in the playoffs with okay. ten wins. I get what he's saying. He's basing it off of if they were a ten win team with Staley last year, they're not that far removed of it. If you bring in a coach like Harbaugh or Belichick. Yeah, to win with. 12 or 13, just, not, not to go from I, 5 I to 12. I, I get it, but you can't just forget what happened in a season because there's so many moving parts. Maybe people got old. It, I think Hunter it, Eckler might be old. You know what a running back shelf life is like now? He might not ever be the same guy coming years. up this year. I think it might be six wins, but only in certain situations. If you look at Staley, he can get you three losses. He lost games <laughs> that he should have won. He's negative war. <laughs> and it, you can cost the team eight wins, but you ain't going to get them eight wins. <laughs> <laughs> so, <that> <laughs> all right, I get it. And that, you, that helps leveling the playing field. You so take Harbaugh, Harbaugh above Staley, that might be six wins. Just because he, but like if you had Harbaugh coming in behind a competent coach, it'd probably be like two or three. Well, exactly. you had, uh, Tony Sperano come in to coach the Miami Dolphins with Chad Pennington a year after they went one and fifteen. They brought in Bill Parcells and uh they went eleven and five, won the division. So when you put the right people in the right places, you can have a massive improvement. Yeah, but I can't say it's all you we can never prove that it's all in the head coach. No, no. But I do think that some head coaches soda. right attention to detail is worth two or three wins a year. I and mean, like, here's one of my things that always blows my mind is like, you hear about like Saban. He was, he, he was everything you needed to be in the NFL coach. It just didn't work out for whatever reason. But then you hear things like urban Meyer. How can some coaches be so freaking out there and not even have a 
beat on anything that's going on. Uh, you know what's at a, at a pro level. What's amazing too is like, are any of you surprised of Urban Meyer's lack of success at the NFL? No, Not for a second. No. But like, like, how do you get in that job to where you're so just out of touch? Well, let me let me phrase a different question for you. Going back to Saban, fill in the blank. If Saban would have coached in the NFL for five years, he would have blank been in a Super Bowl. I can't say would have won, but you think he would have got there? I think he would have because he, he's that guy. I think so, but like he was only there two years. Yeah. So if he just stuck it out for like. Half a decade, I think he'd have been like at least in the chase. Wait, what, what say you, Biggie? I say he'd have been successful. I don't know about Super Bowl nor Super Bowl because there's some really good coaches right, who it. haven't reached well, that. Tom Brady, but right. but playoff games. He's but he's more of a eleven and five playoff guy than he would be that five and eleven second right. season. So he he's in the mix anyway. Yeah, right. Mongo playoff team Super Bowls. Super Bowl might be reach. I mean, that's a rare. I didn't say thing. win it. It's, it's, I just yeah. appear. I don't think it's a. It's a reach, but it's not a like. Oh, that's insane. There's a lot of things that have to line up. If I we, agree with that. If we look at st- history, um, uh, running quarterbacks don't win as often. You'd have to end up with a pocket passer. If he got who he wanted, if he'd have got Drew Brees, I'd that's, say that, yes. That's what uh, our uh, audience just said, but. You know, having to when it's an NFL, as as we talked about earlier, NFL team, you have to deal with a GM who's. I mean, think about what you just said, though. Let's think about if Nick Saban got Drew Brees in Miami. Where would he be right now? I think he would have had some Super Bowls. There Maybe you go. Nick Saban has Sean Payton's career. Well, it is all attached to your quarterback at the pro level. At the college level, you can scheme stuff. You can have a bunch of five stars on each side of the line, run the ball down people's throats. In the NFL, if you don't have a top ten quarterback, you're not winning consistently, unless you're Joe Gibbs. There, there are some. <laughs> there are some that can get wins out of NASCAR and otherwise. He wanted to throw that Joe Gibbs out there big time because Joe Gibbs is a, is amazing, dude. Joe Gibbs. See, here's what pissed three me different off. quarterbacks. Oh. People are going to sit here and talk about who's your greatest coach all time. You're going to talk about how many games you won and all that different bullshit. Joe Gibbs went to four Super Bowls. He won three of them over 12 years. Three different quarterbacks. Name me another Super Bowl winning head of coach who won multiple Super you Bowls with it. different quarterbacks. Don't can, ask can we, us questions. Let's we name the quarterbacks of those three Super Bowls. Mark Ribbon is one. Doug Williams. Doug Williams Do you is know one. who all – the other one? Do you know who lost a Super Bowl for him? Uh, it's the one that won one, too, yeah. right? Yeah, Joe Theismann. Changed his name from Theismann to Theismann when he was at Notre Dame to try and help his Heisman campaign. <laughs> so did <laughs> he win true? one or lose that one? That is true. That's a real story. That is damn true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. I just I love me some Joe Gibbs. Then he took the same philosophy to NASCAR and had one of the best He was a NASCAR years. champ, too. You know, I, I'm pretty sure Theismann. I can't say he's the GOAT of all time. No, he, I don't, I'm not saying he is. Shut up, I just Joe Gibbs gets forgotten, and I <laughs> hate that. I didn't even hear what he said. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Theismann has a kid in Charleston. Does he really? Yeah. Are you, well, why would you say that? Uh, I feel like uh, in my- he ran into him at Sam's Uptown Cafe. That's why I want to know. Right. That's There's right. got to be a story here. <laughs> I was that there last bologna night. at 2 a.m. is on fire, bro. It slapped, what was bro. the conversation I like? I spilled a pitcher of tea on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was the blind guy. That was him. <laughs> it all comes full circle. <laughs> he had a killer arm, but he just had no aim. <laughs> God bless. Uh, Mongo, we love you. Hey, you know who that reminds me of? Is the quarterback that was on the Dolphins the last year Saban was there. Do you want to guess? I haven't pulled up who the starting quarterback was. I can give you his stats. Go ahead. He threw for 22-36, 12 touchdowns, 15 picks. Ooh, that's tough. What, what, guess. It what year was this? Would this was 2005, 2006? Uh, it was 2000 something. <laughs> Hang on. 2006. 2006. Running back was Ronnie Brown. Hey, here, I'm going to go with uh, Brian Greasy. Uh, Sorry. Big guess. year guess. I am going to go with. There was a Greasy, right? There was, but not this year. But it was Brian. Brian did play right. for that. Yeah. All right, cool. So I don't right. feel so bad. You get some points for that. After he played for the Broncos. Right. Uh, I he was singing a song for us. <laughs> I thought he was going to. I'll, I'll go, go with, with uh, Jay, Jay Fiedler. Jay Fiedler. Ah. Mongo. I'm just going to buzz myself. Buzz. Buzz. Joey Harrington. 
I go oh, back to college God. too. I didn't ever. I would greatest. <laughs> would have never got it. The greatest NCAA 04 video Joey game Harrington? player of all time. Nick Saban's quarterback. That's why he went back to college. I didn't know he got a shot out of anywhere other than what Detroit. Did they go that I know, season? right? Uh, they went six and ten. Oh, that, that explains it all. I mean, you went. You Dude. won six games with Joey Harrington. Maybe NFL you are the level. goat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, put him in. He should have stayed. <laughs> if you just shipped out another quarterback. How many other players can you think of that were top 10 picks by the Lions that you can't remember played on another team in that era? They had like a six, yeah. seven year run where every guy they took sucked. They took a wide receiver with like a number three pick, a number five pick, a number seven pick three years in a row. Why did they always draft receivers? It was weird because Matt Millen was their GM and he's a former linebacker and they just kept taking wide receivers. I remember Charles Johnson. Yeah, and they took uh, – uh, Who was the guy from USC? Mike Williams? Yep, Mike Williams. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they took uh, – They oh, took a goodness. bunch of stupid ones. Yeah. I can look that up. I don't want to get down that rabbit hole. Maybe we, we, we have a shout-out coming up. We do have a Detroit episode in a couple weeks. Right? I'm ready for that. Is it next week? Uh, I need to look. I think it's, it's two weeks. Next week or the week I after. I think the week – you're off next week. No, I'm here next week. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> Listeners, we'll be back next week. Yeah. But but I think uh, you know, we we we're going to have a Detroit episode which is going to be fantastic. It's back to the no filter <laughs> Detroit Lions. That's second. it. Let's Old go. school boys, they all bring it. I'm excited. Mm. We're even so, international on that show cuz one of them's in I think I it's Windsor, wanna, Ontario, Canada. That's right. I want to share this with you guys. It's one of the things I love uh about Belichick cuz a lot of people will say, you know, what is this record? With and without <laughs> different people. Super Bowl against you Seahawks. You smell your pits like superstar? No. No, well, I, I dug in my ear, brought out a little wax. Oh. <sighs> just making sure it's like That's superstar. interesting. I didn't um, know that was a thing people did. I'm just making sure. That's what I saw. No, it is. And my ear itched and he made it a thing, so I didn't know what to do because I felt like everyone was looking at me. And then, I, I thought it was it, superstar. It was out of schedule for your mannerisms. Yes. <laughs> All right. What I was going to say about Belichick, the Super Bowl against the uh, Seahawks, you give Brady all the credit in the world because that Seahawks defense had the best three-year run since the 69 through 71 Vikings. Down 10 in the fourth quarter, Brady leads them back. Amazing fourth quarter. They're up 28-24. They get all the way down to the goal line. Everybody thinks Malcolm Butler interceptions a lucky play. It isn't. In practice that week on Wednesday, they had set up against that formation on the goal line. Butler went half-ass at it. Bill stops practice. As soon as you see that set, you got to hit it. you got to hit it hard. Jump it. You'll never regret it. We won't regret it. Hit it hard. So as soon as Butler sees it, it's Malcolm, go. Boom, interception. You stole a Super Bowl right there just because something happened in practice. Good and coach. you didn't like how hard he went. Attention to detail. So, it was a poor coaching decision by somebody else that was just fired. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we didn't – because it's not the same conversation, right? But, Mongo, you're right. Pete Carroll also stepped away from the Seahawks. And you know why that he, happened? He gets crucified for that play call. What's Absolutely. the movie? Why wouldn't you? As Give it to should. Skittles, man. As you just hey. running wild on your sorry ass. What's the movie that Fonzie's in with uh, Waterboy? Adam yeah. Silver. And he's over there. Bill Belichick was over there. Didn't take him the, Dude. the bag, bag. Hey, Bobby Sean Bowden was carving a hole in your ass, and he didn't give it to you, and he gave you a Super Bowl. You want to know why Marshawn Lynch? Call. Didn't get the ball because on the play before, Dante Hightower with a hepperated shoulder fought off the best a offensive hepperated. lineman on the Seattle Seahawks, oh, no. tackled Marshawn Lynch <laughs> with one arm at the two-yard line. Now, they should have gave him the ball again, but they didn't, just like in the Super Bowl against the Atlanta Falcons, who made the big play and stripped the ball from Matt Ryan, Dante Hightower. I, I don't hate... Pete Carroll for that play call. I Be- do. Because it's terrible. Because they 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 had it where they knew they had a play that worked, and it was a play that was so successful that, Dude, for them that he Belichick gift he knew, gift-wrapped them another championship. He They had a play that worked so well that Belichick went out of his way to instill that specific set. Exactly. So I don't think it was a bad play. He just got outcoached. I, I, I'm not going to – because – oh, no, See, it's simple. You give your dogs the ball. You want to win the game, you use your dogs. And right. he didn't use his dog. And, and, and if they get stuffed three times on the goal line, which we'll never know, well, like, then you, saying, can, you can say the you same thing. If you feel like you're that team, you impose your will. And they did not do that. I'm just saying, if they everybody folded like a lawn if chair everybody in the and stadium, gave the Patriots another paper if, if championship. If everybody in the stadium knows what's coming. Deflated balls. If everybody in the stadium knows what's coming. 
And and you do exactly that, and they get stopped. Can't I mean, take nothing serious from a Raiders fan. They could have tried it <laughs> but once. Has just one tuck rule. That's the bitch. argument I would make is the down and distance. You could have ran the ball once. They had time. You, you, you know, but To what you said, they went to that play. The reason the Patriots were ready for it is Seattle ran that play so well and so effective that it was like, oh, it was a no brainer down. The thing that still gets me about that is a Marshawn Lynch run is just under a minute left. He gets tackled. There's like 48, 52 seconds, something like that. And then Patriots, oh, God, I'm looking. We should be calling a timeout. They're going to score here. Oh, they're looking over. Seattle, don't know what the hell they're doing. Like 25 seconds went by before they ran that next play. That's, I think, where Seattle screwed up. I mean, you, that can't happen. I mean, that's part of it. Yeah. Hey, can I take a moment of the show to pause? And I want to congratulate. I look down at the end of the table and, it's Mr. Rain Man. I never know what the hell he's going to say, Canadian Biggie. You're talking about Biggie. <laughs> like, you never know what's coming out of his mouth. It's like he has all these stats from back from YA Tittle days, and it's just there <laughs> in his brain in a compartment that no one knows about. But now everybody knows about it. So you get a little sliver here. Listen and there. for those little Canadian Biggie tidbits. And if, if, just for record, if Canadian Biggie oversleeps on a given night, we'll fill it in with Cajun Biggie. South of that the Bayou. Might, that might be a teaser for another show one day. We'll see Just how that goes. Know. Cajun Biggie. He was also in uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? in an Adam Sandler movie. Cajun Biggie. Home oh, is where the heart I is. Home know, is where the heart is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. You like I to give him a shot. <laughs> and prepare for Cajun Biggie. <sighs> in case, you know, you know, you know, you got you to get right, Canadian. All right. So who's who's the best coach that's ever lived? Ever live. Ever live. Are we talking any sport? Any sport. Because I'm telling you right now, I think it's Nick Saban. Wooden. You think it's John Wooden? Yeah. Great. I think Great it, I think I think he's in the running. I think he's in the running. But I Red I, back. The the problem I have with both of these. Well, Red's like in an eight team league. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you were on a, a st- you were you were the coach for a team that had been a dynasty. Like it, it was always good, always good players. It was a smaller league, and then to Wooden, you know, you controlled West Coast basketball. You were able to get any recruit you want. You were the only game in town. I, I mean, it was it just fed itself, and it was a different time where you could go get any player you want. Uh, and now with the, the, I mean, the amount of schools that even play basketball now versus what Wooden had to deal with isn't even close. You know, so I, I just. I think Wooden was by far the best of a, a era gone by, but if you were able to take Wooden's skill set and set it in modern day, it's a stupid question you don't really know the answer to. But I don't know if I would say he would be somebody that would be successful now. Uh, you know, I've, I'm going to go with Bilicek. All right, that's and the re- choice that's respectable. The reason why is because uh, he did this in the salary cap era, and it's actually the salary cap is the reason why. He's the greatest coach of all time. Um, he convinced guys. He had guys playing for less money, taking less money to build a team. And they moved on from people when they had to. Yes. And uh, didn't overpay for anyone. Anyone. I think the downfall, it it wasn't. So they still made the playoffs one year without Brady. But the downfall was the fact that they drafted very poorly the, the last few years of Brady and then after Brady. I mean, don't tell me that. Mac Jones, he, he's look, accepted. Look it him now. in the eye and tell him that. He knows it now. No, oh, they did. I've said this before. Bill the GM failed. Bill the coach. Around. If you want to look at this year, remember they won. Every year was a good draft no, until they, it isn't. Three, 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 three games. <laughs> First time this has happened since 1939 happened this year. The Patriots defense gave up. I'm, I'm used three to three games. bad drafts. They lost he's all three. What's Belichick known for? Defense. The man can still coach. Bill the GM fucked Bill the coach. Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. And we're you, talking about greatest coach. Is that why he left? Because they wouldn't let him be GM anymore? They wanted, uh, well, Scott Piolo is going to come back in. Kraft wanted to restructure personnel, and I don't think Bill was down with that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why you're all wrong on who the greatest coach of all time is. If you say Phil Jackson. I'm well, not. no, 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 no. If you want me to go off Belichick, that's fine. Before you no, go. you can say whatever you want. Coach K. That's, that's a respectable answer, too. I wouldn't even go on Phil Jackson. I'm just saying. I'm going Eric Spolstra. Eric what Spolstra. kind of motherfucker gets to have a, a deal after his divorce is over and he's a <laughs> billionaire? A smart to, one. To melt, that, he's, he's the goat of all time. Who gets a deal like that after he's divorced? It's clearly Eric Spolstra. Well, the fact that Pat Riley was up there in the front office like, 
When's that divorce final? When's Pat that divorce Rowley final? needs to run Ooh, for he president. Needs dry now. He Here's needs, the extension. Hey. He needs to run for president. That is a class move by all those em- employed there. Bros before hoes, buddy. I love it. I like. You know what? You're you're probably halfway sarcastic, halfway serious there. Uh, you know, Spolstra, for what it's worth, my God, has he not done more with less sometimes? Here's the thing, team? though. Oh, he's because amazing. When LeBron came down there, he was like, I'm not sure about Spolstra. I want to, like, maybe change coaches. Like, yeah. he's the GM. But Pat, Pat Riley said, go fuck yourself. <laughs> not so fast. So then guess what? Spolstra's still there. LeBron's gone. And Spolstra's still making the best of a roster every single year going to the playoffs. So give me Spolstra every single year. No, LeBron's about to get another coach fired. It sounds like they don't like yeah. Darvin Ham. Darvin Ham's not my cup of tea. I don't know that we'll ever see another dynasty in the NFL uh, the way it is now, like the Patriots, that lasted as long as it did. I agree with that. And it's not and and Brady's part of it, but it's also because he took less money and finding players a quarterback like that that'll take Willing less to money. Do that. If you look at so Mahomes, you look at Kansas City being kind of that team now. Mahomes signed that. What do you feel like a half billion? You see billion? the downfall. Now you can't have Tyreek Hill. But but here's the thing. That's only going to be for the next couple of years because he signed such a long-term deal. Where the cap the salary keeps going cap up. keeps increasing. You guys will sit here and criticize Mahomes for being a greedy bastard now. But in three years, you'll be like, wow, what an well, unselfish player. In three he's, years, he's like the ninth deal. highest paid quarterback now. That And then the Chiefs will be good again. All right. All right. Who's, who's your – Who's your goat then? I, you talked about Spolster. No, that's my about, goat. That's that's it. You're you're standing on that. No, one. I mean if we're gonna do that, I'm gonna be like Casey Stingle. Casey Stingle. Yeah. I mean, I you, see how how do baseball managers play into this conversation? Because a lot of times when people or, talk about goats, I feel like baseball kind of gets overlooked. It does. I mean, because why like, so much of the early era was like less teams and domination. So you have like Connie Mack. John McGraw, Casey Stingle, they're all there together. But but baseball, as far as like a strategical standpoint, like they're very much involved in the game. I get you it. Know, you can talk it. about an NBA coach and say they're probably less involved. It's hard to talk about a it's hard to talk about like a modern MLB coach that way or manager because of the fact that it's changed so much in the last 150 years. It's clearly the oldest game. So it's hard to put in that same retrospect if an NFL coach was back there coaching Jim Thorpe. You see what I'm saying? No, it's, it, it's hard to relate it. It's also different because baseball at certain times honestly just comes down to man versus man, right? It's that pitcher versus that bat. But, I mean, as far as, like, uh, MLB, it would be like, to me, it would be like Sparky and, uh, you know, La Russa, who do you Joe Torrey. Who, who do you think is the greatest baseball manager of all time? It's tough for me. I'll let you think about that. So, all right. So, you were on who for your goats, Biggie? Oh, well, it's Belichick. But You're Belichick, Mongo. You were Coach K. No. Biggie said Coach K. Oh, Biggie said Coach. K. Yeah, I he said I'll go off of what oh. everybody's saying, and I'll go Coach K. Okay. I went. I went with Wooden. Um, you, okay, I got confused on the college basketball Saban. there. So, and I got I got saving. And, and so, you know, I think. Oh, he, who's the coach that won all those NHL titles? Scotty um, Bowman. I'm going with him. There you go. <laughs> Change it on the He fly. won like an 11 or something. We got a late oh, submission. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I won. Well, yeah. But, you know, the coach of the European soccer yeah. league. Yeah, yeah exactly. Soccer. So I'm I, going with Scotty Bowman. Scotty doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> uh, but I think college football is going to be sadder without saving because uh, Alabama is not going to be the same. They're not going to be the same. No. But I'm going to tell you what. Next year – is the most I've been excited for college football than I can remember because now we're at 12 teams. The Big 12 isn't as crazy it used to be. We're all going to go to the Penn State game yes. in Morgantown. Yes. And if everything goes right, you look on that schedule, there's not a, a, a thing that stands out that says we can't win that game. We can be in that tournament next year I know. if we don't shit the bed. You win 10 games in a Power 4 conference now? I guess you got a shot, right? I'm telling you, if we everything goes right next year, we could be in the tournament for its first 12-team year. Trust the climb? Uh, it's hard. Mm. Yeah, we're going to amber hurt it. Yeah. We're going to shit the yeah. bed. Yeah. Cleveland steamer style. Mm. All right, so the question, right, I, Biggie? the the question I asked good. you guys earlier, and I said we we're going to come back to. We're back. What is the best job in college football? Because we just talked about how Alabama will not be the same without Nick Saban. Nobody feared Alabama, but people feared Nick Saban and his team. Yeah. So, what what position? If you could have any job in college football right now, right now, if it was nameless, if nobody was, a, it's easy sh- for me. 
Who would Georgia. You? Georgia. All right. Uh, can you want to elaborate a little bit? I mean, it's clearly Georgia. But the fact that they fell out of the top four in this year's playoffs, Georgia would have put up a way better game than Washington against friggin' Michigan. I'm not saying Michigan wasn't legit, but right. I would take Georgia over any position because now that Alabama's gone, that was their only nemesis. I mean, you could have made the argument Georgia. Georgia should have made the tournament instead of Texas. Oh, no, that's mean, my point. And you're not necessarily wrong. They shouldn't have fell past four. So if you if you were a coach taking over a program, you're going to be there for the next 10 years, you think there's not a better job than Georgia. Correct. Right. All right, Biggie? The way that it's been built, the fact you're in the SEC and what uh, Gregory just said with your one nemesis is now gone, Georgia. I'm telling you, it's <laughs> easy. You different, Mongo, or are you riding the same train? I, th- I think a part of that depends on is it the program or is it smart. Um, I personally like the – I'm going to tie it to pro football a little bit, the Billichek path where every other team in the division, not only was he doing well, but every other team in the division sucked for two decades. The Bills, the Jets, the Dolphins were pretty bad. For two decades, I I think a better team might be somebody outside of the SEC, like uh, a Michigan, where you've got an easier path to the playoffs every year. Well, is it going to be easier after this expanded Big Ten? Though I don't I don't think that's true. Well, see, that's where you know, like I love me some USC, but now you're a West Coast team going east all the time. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma, if they were still in the Big Twelve, I would say their job because they have lesser competition. Going to the SEC, it's going to get tougher. With Georgia, when Mark Rick was there, they were a good team. Winning 10, 11 games, going to big bowls. So Georgia's a program with the right coach that can be at the top. You know who I choose? Stanford. <laughs> no. <laughs> I choose Penn State. I was going to say that, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you know why? I Are you going to say USC. No, that's Biggie's stomping ground. That's what I'm saying. No, the reason why I say Penn State, and tell me if you're different here, is Penn State, you're able to make a shit ton of money. Yep. You're expected to win, and you're going to win. If you're bad, you're winning eight games. Yeah. And if you win nine or more, they're not really going to move on from you, and you're going to play in front of an epic crowd. you got great facilities. Yeah, your tradition, your history. Hundred and what five thousand, hundred and ten thousand fill the stadium. You got yeah. a passionate fan base. Here's the thing. You go ten and two and you lose to Michigan and Ohio State, your fan base is a little upset, a little disappointed, but you're beating everybody except for the best two or three teams in the country. But you have a potential where like once a decade you, you probably can. Yeah, right? you get the you get the right quarterback and you win the Big Ten two P- years. Penn in State a row. will probably win a national title in our lifetime. E- even with the I, I, think so. I agree with another that. one. Yeah, the expanded playoffs—they don't need to win the right. conference. They just got to. They just got to oh, be top shit. twelve. We lost to Ohio State again. Well, hopefully, we don't have to play them in the playoff, and someone else can bounce their ass. So yeah, that might be how that goes. If you look at it this year, I think they finished the final regular season poll at number ten. They'd have been in the playoff most likely. Yeah, I mean, and they're they get good recruits. I, it's a good program. I like that you said that, but I don't like because I thought that was going to be my little ace in the hole, and I was going to pull it out there, but. I That's love fine. the fact that they're going to a 12-team tournament because every program feels like now that they have a ch- fighting chance. Imagine if they would have done this shit like four or five years ago. I know, but like now it's like you have your top five schools. And it's like your Ohio State, I, you know, and all that. You know, I don't blame them off. I'm well, with my you. point is now, just like us being like diehard Mountaineer fans, if we at least get in this tournament every like three or four or five years – my God, our life is good. That's all you want. Could you imagine if like there's a, a game and I don't know how they're going to do it. I think the first round, it's on campus, right? Oh, they're going to do the first, the top four get a bye. So the first round of games might be on campus right. games. Could you imagine a, a playoff play. game in Morgantown in, in December? Holy That'd be amazing. Shikes. That'd be amazing. Saying, ah. Opportunities are just unimaginable. The thing is, though, ESPN is going to try to stuff six SEC schools into this 12-team playoff. I don't, think so. I don't it, think so. No, they will. Because that's they yeah. on their team. They, they're no, gonna I don't push. think it's going to be half. I don't. I, think I bet will. it's at least four. If, I think if six four, is much. If four of the 12 every year aren't SEC teams with Texas no, and Oklahoma but, getting added in, I would, I would be I'd be fine amazed. with four, though, because I think that's real. <laughs> Oklahoma's done. Texas is done after a few years. 
they do have some talent uh, in the whole you race. Can't right say they're done. I think look, you can't you say saying, they're done until they get in that conference and see how it flows. You're, you're saying Texas is back, and I know that's a sarcastic thing we say, but as much as I hate to admit it, like they're not like the the A list, A list, but they're right there. Like they they Sarkeesian's a really good coach. Look, Sarkeesian, like he was on that trajectory until he was like, oh, I have a little bit of that drinky drinky, you know, and yeah. then he got derailed. <laughs> But outside of that, like Star- Sarkeesian was winning everywhere. I'm telling they you, they got lucky. If you him. let four out of twelve teams from SEC, I'm not mad about. Well, it. No, because they probably deserve to be exactly. there regardless. Like you have your Alabamas, your Georgias, uh, your Texases of the world, and whoever else stands up that year, that's fine. But I, I like mean, you. Still could get your ACC and the Big Twelve and everything else. A couple of Big Tens in there, probably the, two or three. The problem is they should have done this shit already because they've essentially killed the Pac-12 by not oh, doing this done. earlier. Yeah, because done. if the Pac-12 had already had a path where they knew they were going to get somebody in, because the Pac-12 and the Big 12 were the two that were always left out. Well, the ACC kind of, but Florida State and Clemson kind of saved their ass. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the Pac-12, I feel like every other year was out of the playoff. Yep. So no wonder – your elite teams leave, but if, if they expanded the playoffs, do you have schools like USC and UCLA really wanting to go to the Big Ten if they know they're getting there? I don't think that happens. No, they would have stayed bad. I, well, that's but this is all ESPN's it. like puppet mastery trying to kill college football so they can just own it all and start their own fucking league one day. You watch. It's going to happen. Well, if you're Florida State and you're going to sue to get out of the ACC, why are you doing that now when there's 12 teams? Because now you're in it because you run the ACC. Well, but they have weird revenue sharing, and Florida State makes more money than any other school, but they get less than, you know, who was in the ACC championship this year with them? If Florida State would have been uh, in it. Louisville. Louisville. Louisville, you know, made as much that's, as that's Florida insanity. State. Did. But that's how they do that's it. That's how bad it is. Maybe that's a good job. I mean, it. it well, no. Louisville. Next year, it will be a path to the – it will title. be a path to the playoffs. Yeah, but the ACC might be a desirable place to be going forward. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm oh, saying. Yeah, yeah. If you could roll through there, then you're a guaranteed spot. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So the you Big leave, Twelve could be a powerhouse every single year. The Big Twelve and the ACC is where you want to be if Both you want to get to the I playoffs. That's what I'm saying. If everything goes right, we're going to see some fun days in Morgan down this year. I hope so. So. Our, uh, our audience is here. Are, are we uh, also going to Morgantown? Yeah, us? yeah, Mike, Mikey, and Mikey. Do you have a, a best coaching job in the country? You would take. You want to shout it out for us? He don't want to say anything. Uh, oh, yeah, people get shy because of the millions of listeners. Speaking millions. of the audience, and millions. <laughs> Speaking of the audience, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, a group member in our NFL's life group. Oh my God, oh, they're Jennifer. probably a carnivore of some sort. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I don't know. Jennifer Huntley Hosford, her, okay. her brother won The Voice. Oh, what? Wow. Yeah. Like Congratulations. Won the whole thing. Won The Voice. Like this, this year? year? Yeah. Ah. Sorry. He sang the... Ah, don't be sorry. <laughs> he sang the national anthem at the uh, Bills and Chargers game. Mm, dude, I, we got to tag them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe you could go on The Voice. I absolutely could. What would you sing? Uh, probably uh, Hit the Road Jack. The Road Jack. That's not bad. Why are we talking about blind people so much today? I'm saying it was only two minutes. <laughs> I feel like I could hold it together for two you know minutes. You I would sing? I would sing, very superstitious. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Another blind song. That's it. I feel like Hit the Road Jack's only a two-minute song. If you've ever listened to it, the majority of it is his backup singers. It is. Ah, it is. Protect me, girls. <laughs> I'm going to play this piano. Exactly. Oh, son of a bitch. Hey, last thing I got, I'm ready to call it a night and play some NBA jam, but... Um, I'm going to throw a little Mongo moment in first. You got right, something right. for us. Yeah, throw, throw a Mongo moment in. Okay. I just got one, but it's a big one. I don't know. Yeah. That's well, what she said. Hi. Last week, um, you all discussed. Aquaman 2, is that what you're going to talk about? No. Uh, <laughs> no. We said it was going to suck and it made money. I'll give you a hint. He was in a wheelchair. Stephen Hawking. Oh, it's amazing. Stephen Hawking. Have you seen the stuff that has come out about It's unstoppable. No, right, let's hear it. Okay. For those of you that don't know, for our listeners that don't know, I don't know whether it's true or not, but I really want it to be true. Let's just assume it's it is. True. It's true. We can, tear, we can read true. back to the episode later. That that his, uh, his, his uh, it wasn't women necessarily that was his taste at Epstein Island. He liked midgets doing math equations. 
on a chalkboard that was just slightly out of reach. And he liked to watch that. <laughs> were they nude? I don't know if they were nude or not. He liked they, to see a little nude. dangle. But he just loved them. Like doing like uh, goodwill hunting uh, your formulas, but they can't quite reach. That's it. That is amazing. He's like, what oh. the hell are you talking about? You try to reach that chalkboard. You didn't see this? I did I've not seen, see that specific one. I have yeah. seen what you were talking about. I knew exactly where you were going. I'm glad you're on that same brain. Like, like, like that. Good. Yeah, yeah. I really hope it's true. Will we ever really know? No. We're never going to know. Sean has done got to all of us. That's the way it works. Ah, uh, now I can't even remember what I was going to ask at the end. Oh, it was about the NFL uh, playoffs and the game being on Peacock. I think that's the dumbest shit ever, but according to our audience over here, you don't have to pay for Peacock. You just download it. What? That's what he told me. Uh, I don't know. Why is everybody so mad then? Because you had to download it and pay five ninety nine. dollars oh, That's what they were on. saying online. Come on. but well, That's what I'm saying. You got to pay five ninety nine, dollars Or... You just get the most expansive streaming service possible and watch the local channels because they still got to give it to KC and Miami no matter what, right? Yes. That's the way the deal works. What Did you know at the beginning of the year they were going to stream playoff games on Peacock? I know I didn't. No. I, you know, and this will be a topic for another show, but I think we could do a, a whole episode on just TV deals and how that shit works. But, like, we talked about how NFL games have gone to YouTube. And DirecTV losing it. Like, I just wonder, like, what that revenue is. So, my question is, by Peacock pulling this stunt, and look, it's going to piss off people, but is it enough to generate enough subscribers to make it a lucrative deal? Because you know they are paying the NFL some cabbage to get this. Yeah. I don't know. It's like where Amazon paid for Thursday Night Football and they kept getting really crappy games. Right. But this is not that. This is not a crappy game. This is a one-off. This is the Chiefs in a play. This is a home Chiefs playoff game. I don't know. I guess to me, enough people out there at this point know how to stream around having to pay for something. So I don't know what you're getting. I like. To me, it's a big deal because for sporting events, you want to go out to the a bar with a big screen TV and have a few drinks. Well, your local bar now doesn't have the game on because they don't have Peacock. You know, they still have a direct TV or their I old think school if they cable. Had a profitable bar, they'd have it yeah, on. Yeah, they can spring for that. I well, can promise I'm saying, you that. As as the bar owner now, you got to go through a couple hoops to do you, it. It's there just are a pain. Some, did you know that? I, I, what? There's what? like weird rules about like oh, if Peacock. You a, no, if you own a bar, like you can't just play like music. Right. Like yeah, you, you got to be. Is it licensed? Through? Yeah, you yeah. have to you have to pay for the licensing to play it at a commercial establishment, and it's like stupid. So like we might pay ten bucks a month for like Sirius XM, but if you're using the same type of service at a restaurant, you're paying like hundred and fifty bucks a month. Nope. I, I still think that uh, if you're paying for Peacock, it's going to pay for itself with the people who come in and watch it. Still, right now, right. But I don't know if a if a establishment like a, a wing place or a bar or something can just play Peacock. I don't know if they're. No, I'm, just I'm sure they will if they're. I feel any like you're gonna come brains. out ahead regardless. You should do it anyway. But like, are they going to get in trouble if they're playing off of streaming? I don't know how that no, works. They wouldn't yeah. stream it. I feel like even if you paid illegally, you're still going to make money because how many people is going to flock there? That's going to be like, I ain't paying oh, for Peacock. I agree. Let's look at it. I like the positive spin. It's Small Business Saturday, baby. We're giving right. back to the small business. Like Code Spot's come, like, come watch us. Come we'll watch Peacock. Peacock, you rednecks. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. We'll pay for it. Exactly. Now, They're all coming out of the woodwork. See, so, there's a winner here somewhere. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's small business. <laughs> it is. It if is. They pr- if they do right. Yeah. Mongo, you work in this industry. You must have something to say about this. Sure. I mean- I think a lot of people have figured out how to watch all the cock you want for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Not me. I'm not watching that channel. Damn. He's silent. That sounds like a lie. Why does it sound like a lie? I mean, why'd your voice get high right there? Is it, is it, it sound like I a can't lie? hear my own voice pitch, but I'll take your word for it. One time I get a label. <laughs> all I'm trying to do is have a conversation with you guys. All right, you ready to wrap it up, Ernie? I'm ready. Uh, do, you, do you think we ought to do NBA live? Oh, we can. I think we ought to try that. Yeah, that'd be fine. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Big, you feeling okay? I got to feel like I'm dying. <laughs> he so said that he started the show That's off how we're going to end the show, that we're going to die. Ominous. Dark, ominous tones. All right, well, I'll wrap up by telling you guys, I also did an interview. Make sure you check out. We'll have a second episode that drops this week. 
uh, I had a guy. We we run into some people that have a the tendency to kind of go to that stand up comedian lifestyle. This guy was a former professional wrestler, never made it big, but was all over the indie circuit and was even associated with Buff Bagwell for a while. And they had a kind of a falling out. So we talk about all those things, but just kind of a fun conversation. Guy growing up in uh, Akron, Ohio, there, you know, in the the economically depressed uh, Rust Belt, so to speak. We had a fun conversation with him. And, you know, uh, his uh, I liked his finishing move. It was just an old school just Larry, like a clothesline from hell, but he's like more, more of a Stan Hansen style. Yeah. I still like Bradshaw. Bradshaw did it right. Yeah. If you had a finishing move, what would it be? Uh, the Dominator. Not, you said that. You stuck with that for years. Yes. You like it. I, I appreciate. We it. are the nation of domination. domination. That's it. Raise that fist, brother. Biggie. What about you? What's your finishing move? I would have the. Uh, Bob Backlund crossface chicken wing. I love that too. God. Bob Backlund. You know what incredible. my second one to be? Can I answer that before Monger answers? Sure. The Steiner recliner. So, so you have a finisher. Yes. To go with the. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Or, or, or a submission. I mean. Right. So, so like I would go with the uh, Dominator. The Dominator. And then, I, and then you just roll that'd them over. Be the set up, and then the Steiner recliner would tap him out. I like it. All right. That's, like that's it. dominating as much as it can be. Mm-hmm. Imposing like your will it. as an alpha. Mongo. Two in the pink. Wait a minute. Are we talking Two about- in the pink. Are we talking about wrestling moves? Yeah, yes. Oh. And fist in the stink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi-o. All right, fisty. What do you got? <laughs> Andre the Giant's I'm hands done. were He's so like, big. why do I tell you guys anything? <laughs> Andre the Giant's hands were so big. Two in the pink and one in the stink. Came from the same hand. Oh, my God. Could you? That would destroy some. He killed four women. No more babies. <laughs> <laughs> Mongo, what's your finishing move, damn it? The stunner. <laughs> the stunner? Yeah, I don't know what that is. You Stone don't, Cold Stunner. Do you need to watch more wrestling? Yes. We got it. We the stunner is one of my all time favorite moves. It's the perfect the move for a guy the TV who's and really NBA six Jam. We're going to watch the Royal Rumble. It's, it's year, awesome. Right? Oh, I'm I almost went there, but crossface chicken wing, if you've ever actually put anybody in it or been putting it, it hurts like a mother. Yeah, but what about the figure four? But the cross, you're holding him, and you're just right here, so you can whisper sweet nothings in his ear. <laughs> Bob uh, Backlund uh, would whisper sweet nothings in your ear. All right, mine would be, I like the figure four, but my version is, instead of the opponent on their back, they're on their stomach, so they can't roll it over. Nobody does that. I feel like it's innovative. Someone listen to me and pay me a fee for that idea. And then I uh, also like the top rope diving headbutt. I don't know I why. That. I feel like it's it. But you we probably saw how, we saw how it ended with Chris Benoit. Yeah, you get CTE and kill your family. Exactly. That's how it goes. But ladies and gentlemen, this has been an episode of the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. Thanks for letting us invade your ears once again. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We're going to do our best to bring you two episodes a week this year. We're having a great time talking about whatever. If you got an idea for a topic, let us know. Find us on social media. We're everywhere. And as always, you can go to WDKSports.com or I'm sorry, WDKSports.us. And leave us a voicemail. Just and if you want to be on the show, we got you know we got people filling out guest intake forms, and we haven't brought on the show yet. We we gotta let some of these fans come on, and let's embarrass them. Maybe I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Enjoy everything you got going on in January. The weather sucks, but we'll see you on the other side. Playoff. Playoff. Bye bye. <laughs> Don't forget to follow us on all forms of social media, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We'll keep bringing you new content wherever you get it. Special recognition to Mr. Brown's Labor of Love, a growing Facebook group, America's pastime for the love of baseball. There, hundreds of former big league players, umpires, managers, announcers, and writers interact with our fans to talk all things baseball. Make sure you find our other Facebook groups as well and give them a like, a follow, and a subscribe to We Don't Know Sports on all platforms.